Hi, my name is Patrick Boyle. Welcome back to my YouTube channel where we learn all about derivatives and quantitative finance. In today's video, we're going to learn about time varying volatility and GARCH and how these ideas are used in risk management. If this is the first video of mine you're watching, make sure that you click the subscribe button below to see more content like this. Stay tuned to the very end of the video where I might teach you how to spell heteroscedasticity. I probably won't though. Let's see. Okay, time varying volatility in risk management and VAR. What a clickbait title, right? If this isn't a huge hit on YouTube, I'll have to pivot and start doing unboxing videos and top 10 lists like I know you guys really wish you were watching. Anyhow, let's get on with this. This is all part of my series on risk management and value at risk. And I've created a playlist with all of the videos on this topic, which is linked to above if you want to watch the whole series in order. In a standard VAR calculation, the volatility estimate is constant. The problem with this constant volatility method is that substantial evidence exists showing that volatility is not constant from day to day, but rather it varies over time and tends to cluster. Volatility clustering means that a period of increased or decreased volatility is frequently followed by a period of high or low volatility that persists for some time. Essentially what I'm saying is that there's serial correlation in volatility or that today's volatility is a little bit predictive of tomorrow's volatility. Time varying volatility with clustering seems to be a general feature of asset prices. Consequently, using the constant volatility method to calculate VAR could be very misleading. Up on the screen right now is a chart of the daily percentage changes in the price of the VFAIX mutual fund, which we looked at in last week's video on VAR. It's a mutual fund from Vanguard, I believe, on the financials index. Um, it's used as an example in my book, Trading and Pricing Financial Derivatives, upon which all of these videos are based. And I've actually linked to that in the description below if you're interested. As you can see in this image, rather than the big swings in the markets being randomly spread through the time series, you instead notice a lot of clustering, with some of the most violent moves, either up or down, occurring in 2007 and 2008, which of course was the credit crunch. I've actually also made a video on the credit crunch that I've linked to above if you're interested in learning a bit about that. But anyhow, back to our topic. In looking at this chart, it's worth noting that when the expected return and volatility don't vary from day to day, the VAR estimate does not vary either. But if the volatility is changing from day to day, the VAR must actually also be changing too. If volatility changes every day, VAR becomes significantly more complicated. How do we know today's likely volatility? The most common solution to this problem was introduced in 1986 by Tim Bollerslav, whose time varying volatility technique called the GARCH method. GARCH stands, of course, for generalized autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity, allows us to base our prediction of today's volatility on recent volatility. The daily volatility estimate using GARCH is a weighted average of past squared returns, just as it was in the constant volatility case. The difference is that the constant volatility method weighs past squared returns equally, while the GARCH method weighs recent squared returns more heavily than distant returns. The GARCH method works better for currencies than it does for stock prices, as stock volatility goes up more as a result of recent large negative returns than it does as a result of recent large positive returns. In fact, a recent large positive return in an equity market can actually decrease implied volatility. GARCH volatility estimates don't depend on whether yesterday's return was positive or negative. Thus, this method can't allow for stock volatility's asymmetric response to past returns. Asymmetric volatility methods do exist for stock prices that take this into account. 
Once we have an estimate of today's expected volatility from the Garch model, we can multiply the confidence factor times the square root of today's volatility times today's stock price to find today's VAR. When we use the Garch method, the confidence factor is the only number that does not change daily. Hopefully that makes sense to you. With Garch, we're trying to model volatility, taking into account its serial correlation, which causes these clusters. This helps to improve any model-driven calculation of value at risk. Hit the like button if this was helpful to you. Comment below if you think I should switch to unboxing videos and top 10 lists. Next week, we'll learn about the flaws of VAR and some common criticisms of this approach. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button so that you can be notified when each new video is released. I upload one new video each week. Oh, and finally, H-E-T-E-R-O-S-K-E-D-A-S T-I-C-I-T-Y is the spelling of heteroscedasticity. At least, I think it is. I, I hope so. Let me know in the comments below if I got that wrong. Anyhow, have a great day and see you next week. Bye.